which country um, <clears throat> were you in when the when you were uh, in the palace and they had a coup? Yeah, that was in Ghana. But we're distributing books and we start seeing all these. The street was empty. We we're wondering what's going on. And then we see the the armored vehicles, you know. And then you know somebody said, "There's a coup." Oh, <laughs> we're like, "Coup? Oh, okay." <laughs> we don't know what's a coup, you know. And so <laughs> you know, maybe it might have been the first time I even heard the word at that time. And uh, anyway, we just like kept distributing books, and we heard the, you know, then the thing started really going on. So then we had to be taken back to the temple, you know, really quickly, and. We got back in the temple and uh, we were just praying. Everybody was just praying. And then we remember the picture of Lord Shinga. They fell off the wall. And yeah, it was just like Africa was pretty far out. We, we had lots of different experiences there. And Bhaktisya Tamaraj, he had amazing experiences there. I mean, his experiences there were like love and hate. You know, people loved him. I mean, he, he was known for like, Interfaith, and he we could go in any of these organizations and give the philosophy and come out of there like everybody in awe, you know, like wow, what did he just do? Because you know he would just give the philosophy with so much love and care, and then people would hate him for that also because he had he he developed such a following from different organizations and very high class people. And so they would try to kill him also. So he, he went through uh, himself. He himself um, put himself on the line for Shilpa Hadir. He actually gave his life in Africa. He could have died many, 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 many times. But he kept going back, you know, because he just, he was so committed. He was so committed to Shilpa Hadir, Shilpa Hadir's mission. He was committed to to helping people to to shift consciousness. He was committed, and that was that was really his life. And anybody that came near to him, they had to be prepared for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you mentioned that he uh, he didn't think small. He could do anything, but he used to use uh, this mantra. He said, you know. In your service to the spiritual master, you must be three things, humble, submissive, and brave. And so, uh, and then by doing that, then the spiritual master can actually empower. The Lord can actually empower. Mm -hmm. And he had one saying that uh, when you know you're unqualified for a given service, but yet you still engage in doing that service, enthusiastically, that is the moment in which empowerment takes place. And so practically in everything that he did, he was, uh, he was empowered. And so um, he was quite courageous. The reason why I asked you about uh, the uh, coup was because uh, her husband at the time, he expressed that when they were involved in the coup, they couldn't leave the country. And Bhakti Tirtamara sent them to that, that country at the time. And so they were thinking, how oh, are we going to get out of the country? And he was concerned, very much concerned, even to the point where he was frightened what was going to take place. And then, you know, uh, one day he was looking out of the window and in a distance, he saw this orange claw just walking down the road. And as he got closer, he saw a danda. And it was Bhakti Tichamaj. He had come across the border during the coup to actually go get them because he had uh, sent them to the country. And so <laughs> he expressed that that was uh, a sign of his courage and that he uh, was responsible in that all of his services. And because those devotees surrendered their lives to actually serve him, he put his life on the line, you know, to actually make sure they were care for and that they were safe. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.